What's valuable about the lecture, uh, at least in the, in the sort of conception that I'm presenting, and I think you can already tell I'm very supportive of this conception, and I think we'd lose it at our peril, right, uh, is that it's not about the reliable transmission of information. There are many more ways of doing this. And especially if we're talking about a literate culture, you know, culture where people have, you know, ways of, as it were, getting more um, fine-grained, detailed understandings of things through multiple media and so forth, right? In a sense, the lecture is not competing with that, okay? And the, certainly the lecture is not competing um, with people, uh, as it were, trying to, uh, you know, respond to what they're learning because obviously the lecture, to a certain extent, is a very authoritarian institution. There's no doubt about it in a certain way, right? I mean, there's a sense in which a lecturer is telling you something and you're listening, and that kind of asymmetry, of course, goes against a lot of our norms about learning and so forth that we've developed now. But what the value, the value of that asymmetry, and this is a um, point that I want to stress here, is that it, the lecturer, if the lecturer is good, and this is where the universities have to think about the kind of people they hire to be their brand leaders, right, uh, is that it's some, someone who can exemplify in their practice this kind of daring to know. In other words, you don't want to have a bionic textbook, right? You don't want to have, you don't want to have someone whose content is reducible to their PowerPoints. Or where you, you know, because you've been to lots of lectures, right, where you say, oh my god, I, you know, if I just had the PowerPoints and just read the article, I wouldn't have to put up with this bullshit. Right? If that is your response, then that per the person you're responding to has failed in the enlightenment mission of the university.